Good evening. So September is here and one thing's clear, there's going to be no early end or no early easing of the tension between India and China on the line of actual control. Today also angry statements coming from China accusing India of actually taking steps to change the status quo along the line of actual control. And frankly now what actually happened is coming uh, from, from both sides, we're starting to hear some, get some sort of clarity as to what actually happened. It appears that India did detect the Chinese making attempts to change the status quo in the line of actual control. As is, as is Chinese habit, let's face it, not just with India. Chinese are used to doing this in the South China Sea. They do it for just about every single day that they have. They change the status quo and then they say, well, this is the way it is. Why are you complaining? That's what the Chinese try to do once again in this particular area on the South Bank of the Hong Kong Lake, close to Chushu. Um, and, and the Indian soldiers realized that this is what is going to happen. So they went and they occupied the heights first, the peak, the Chinese to the punch. And that essentially is what has emerged. It's useful just sort of quickly giving you a picture of what actually is at stake out here. We've heard so much about Hong Kong so and the North Bank of Hong Kong so because this is where all those fingers are finger three to fingers eight. We know that the Chinese have moved in. They've occupied a lot of territory, which has always been considered disputed. India has patrolled up to a certain position. The Chinese have come, they've occupied part of that, that disputed area and they're just sitting there. Now the south bank of the Bank is also, of course, a really important area. You will recall that in 1962, there was a lot of fighting out here. Not very far from where this particular clash is taking place is the, is the familiar, famous, famous location of Rezamla, a place which has perhaps seen one of the most brave and historic moments in the history of the Indian Army where, the, where a certain battalion of the, of the, Kumau, the Kumau Regiment led by Major Shaitan Singh fought out a massive, massive force of Chinese. They each gave their life to fought to the last man and that, that's why they have their monuments out there to commemorate that particular example. So, Chushul, Rezangla, this is an area which did see a lot of fighting in 1962 as well and is strategically very important. They are, their tanks here, their armor vehicles, both sides are very, uh, very, very heavily deployed in this particular area. This is the spot where in India did see the Chinese going up to try and occupy those, those heights and stepped in to prevent them from doing so. But you can expect a lot more of this. It's clear that the two sides are going to continue to jockey for position. They are well entrenched. It's not easy for either side to really brush the other one aside right now. But a lot more of this is going to continue for a while. And if you're thinking, hey, it's all going to end very soon. Winter is coming after that. There's going to be snow and nothing's going to happen. Well, again, remember 1962. In 1962, the Chinese attack came in October continued all the way through till mid-November, which is when the ceasefire actually took place in 1962. So there's really no question of anybody uh, thinking about relaxing at this particular point. All right, let's quickly show you all the major stories at this time. As brigade command level talks continued for the second day on Tuesday over the Chinese incursion in the South Pangongso area of Eastern Ladakh, India said the People's Liberation Army had again engaged in provocative action on Monday. The Ministry of External Affairs said in a statement that the fresh incursion was again thwarted by the Indian Army due to the timely defensive action. The Ministry said this was the second attempt by China to change the status quo at the line of actual control. After India reported the first provocative attempt by the Chinese military, the commanders of both the armies have held two rounds of talks to de-escalate the tensions. After People's Liberation Army's fresh provocation in Ladakh, China on Tuesday said that the Sino-India boundary is yet to be demarcated due to which there will always be problems. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi said the two countries should implement the consensus between their leadership to not let differences from escalating into conflicts. He also said that China is ready to manage all issues through dialogue with India. He said in the past, President Xi Jinping and Prime Minister Narendra Modi met many times and reached many important consensus. India and China on Tuesday held another round of military talks to ease escalating tension triggered by fresh confrontation between the two sides on the southern bank of the Pangongso Lake in eastern Ladakh. 
A PTR report quoting government sources said that the brigade commander level talks began at 10 a.m. in Trishul on the Indian side of the line of actual control with a specific agenda to discuss the situation around the Pangongso Lake. On Monday, the Indian Army said the Chinese military carried out provocative military movements to unilaterally change the status quo on the southern bank of Pangongso Lake on the intervening night of August 29th and 30th, but the attempt was thwarted by Indian troops. The two sides held talks for around six hours on Monday as well, but no concrete outcome emerged from the engagement. After the opposition Congress shot two letters to Mark Zuckerberg over the reports that Facebook didn't act on the hate speech by some BGP leaders, Information Technology Minister Ravi Shankar Prasad has now written to the company's founder, alleging that the platform is the latest tool being used to create internal divisions and social disturbances by vested groups. In a strongly worded letter, Prasad said that Facebook's Indian employees are on record abusing Prime Minister Narendra Modi and senior cabinet ministers, which is problematic. Prasad wrote that he had been told that in the run-up to the 2019 elections, there was a concerted effort by Facebook India management to not just delete pages or substantially reduce their reach but also offer no recourse or right of appeal to affected people who are supportive of the right-of-centre ideology. On the heels of Information and Technology Minister darting a letter to Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg, Congress leader Rahul Gandhi on Tuesday claimed that international media has exposed the social media giant's brazen assault on India's democracy and social harmony. In a tweet he wrote, No one, let alone a foreign company, can be allowed to interfere in our nation's affairs, as he demanded an investigation into the allegations against Facebook. With his tweet hitting out at the social media platform, Rahul tagged a recent article by the Wall Street Journal on how questions were raised by Facebook employees on its India team's neutrality after an executive posted internal messages allegedly favouring the BJP. He wrote international media have fully exposed Facebook's and WhatsApp's brazen assault on India's democracy and social harmony. After alarming GDP numbers on Monday, India's Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index, or PMI, for August came in at 52, compared to 46 in July, signalling growth and rebound in production volumes for the first time in five months. Production growth was largely driven by greater client demand for Indian goods following the resumption of business operations, according to firms. Remember, the PMI above 50 means growth, while below this number means contraction. Taking a dig at Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman over her act of God remark on the economic slump due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Senior Congress Leader P. Chidambaram said on Tuesday that the government should not blame God for a man-made disaster. Speaking to NDTV, the former Finance Minister said Sitharaman should instead thank God, who has blessed the farmers of this country. He said the pandemic is a natural disaster, but the government is compounding the pandemic with a man-made disaster. The Supreme Court on Tuesday granted 10 years to the telecom companies to pay their adjusted gross revenue or AGR dues. A three-judge Apex Court bench headed by Justice Arun Mishra directed telcos to pay 10% upfront payment of their AGR dues by March 31, 2021 and the rest in yearly installments starting from April 1, 2021. The top court has asked telecom companies to submit personal guarantees within four weeks against the payment of AGR dues. The Department of Telecommunications in March had appealed to the Apex Court, seeking 20 years for paying AGR dues. As per the Department of Telecommunications assessment, total amount was 1.19 lakh crore rupees. Vodafone Idea owed 58,254 crore rupees and Bharti Airtel 43,989 crore rupees. Vodafone has already paid part of its AGR dues and has 50,399 crores pending, while Airtel's outstanding amount is 25,976 crore rupees. Congress leader Priyanka Gandhi Vadra on Tuesday hailed the Allahabad High Court directive quashing the detention of Dr. Kafil Khan under the National Security Act. She hoped the Uttar Pradesh government will immediately release him without any malice. The Congress leader added that she also congratulated all the justice-loving people and party workers in the state who had been making efforts for Khan's release. The Allahabad High Court has ordered the immediate release of Khan, who has been in jail since January after a speech he delivered at the Aligarh Muslim University during 
during the Anti-Citizenship Amendment Act protests in December. The Delhi High Court on Tuesday granted bail to the Pinjra Thor activist Devangana Kalitha in the North East Delhi violence case. The court said that the police failed to produce any evidence of her instigating women of a particular community or giving hate speeches. The court granted Kalitha bail on furnishing a personal bond of 20,000 rupees and also directed her to not tamper any evidence or influence any witnesses. Kalitha, who had four cases registered against her, will still not be released from jail. Although she has secured bail in three cases, she is yet to secure bail in a case under UAPA. Kalata was arrested in May for her alleged involvement in the Delhi riots and was charged for rioting, unlawful assembly and attempt to murder. Former President Pranab Mukherjee, who died on Monday, was cremated with full state honours on Tuesday. Mukherjee's body was kept at his official home in Delhi, Den Rajaji Mark, for people to pay their last respects. Prime Minister Narendra Modi visited his residence and paid his last respects to the former president. President Ramnath Kovind, Vice President Venkaya Naidu and several other leaders also paid their respects to the veteran leader. Because of COVID-19 protocol, the body was taken for last rites in a hearse van instead of a gun carriage. The funeral took place at the Lodi crematorium. The government has declared seven-day mourning as a mark of respect. <laughs>